What's going on everyone? Back with a studio update. We did a couple of these while I was kind of trying to get this area situated, but never followed up after I've really got it rolling and have things, you know, running fairly smoothly. There's not a ton of things left to do, but there's always a list of items that I feel like need to be improved or figured out just to kind of help me use this space more efficiently. But kind of give you guys a, uh, a run through again, as you, I did two videos previously, kind of taking this room from just a plain white room to what you see here. It's nothing all that fancy, but it is nice to have a dedicated space that I can leave like this as you know, up to this point. When I was back in Kansas City, I actually had a studio that was dedicated and was nice, but then for the last few years, I didn't. I was having to set up and tear down every time I did a video, which was definitely more difficult. We got the, the desk set up here. Now this is an Ikea top with Ikea adjustable sawhorse style legs. Nothing fancy about that thing. I didn't really cover that the last time, but it's a pretty, pretty simple situation on top of the desk I have a uh, it's like a foam pit map this is actually an element one I use that most of the time I do like to have you know it's a little bit of a softer surface on the desk so I feel like it's a little bit better for audio as well but I also I kind of like having the black top color at times and it's easy to remove or put back if I'm really doing something close up on the bench where black parts may blend in. Kind of recapping some of the other things that we covered in the previous videos. I've got LED soft boxes, one there and one there. This one is uh, adjusted a lot taller than I had it before. I basically kind of have it over top of me now, more like a, uh, what they call it, a hair light. So that I've got three acoustic panels that I made. Those are hanging on the wall. And then basically like a heavy moving blanket that's put up in the corner down there on the bottom part. It's a little bit hard to see, but uh, you get the picture. Here's the 3D printer that I've got here at the house now. So um, I have them both at the shop and at the house. This is a TiVo Nearus, and I've got it on a little rolling kitchen cart. It's actually kind of a nice cart. I think it was like 69 bucks or something like that. So super cheap, easy option. And then I've got a long AC adapter. It's actually right here. Um, in case I want to actually roll this thing out to use it in video where the camera, you know, in front of the camera rather than off to the side. Simple uh, filament holder off the side, kind of direct feed in, works out really nice. This soft box is wall mounted, worked out really well, gets rid of a tripod on the floor in this area. And then I did bring my old tool chest here. I've got the, uh, what is it? This is the four drawer. I've got the five drawer at the shop now. Making two functional toolboxes has been, you know, one of the struggles trying to make sure that I've got, you know, duplicates of tools that I'm going to need all of the time and all of that. It's, you know, it's an expensive endeavor, even at our scale. It's actually functioning pretty well now. I can do most things here other than some really heavy fabrication, but even some of that we're starting to get closer and closer to. A lot of what I have worked on is kind of some organization and things like that, even down to, you know, cable management and just being able to function here. My audio situation, I, I'm, I'm much happier with. So I do have the Audio-Technica 875R overhead. What I have changed though, is I now pump that into a Zoom H4N Pro, which is this guy here. So this is the mic cable goes right in. It feeds phantom power to the microphone. This thing I also direct at me like so. And these two microphones, those two microphones on top actually record another separate audio track. So if anything were to happen with that microphone and it was bad, I would have a backup track of audio recorded on that Zoom. Now, if anything happened on that Zoom to itself completely, I have another Zoom H1N that I record a backup track of audio with. Just in case, uh, it's what I used to record the audio from my Audio-Technica mic uh, to. So the little Zoom H1 records a backup track on its own. Simple, just in case. I almost never download it. It's just in the case that something happened. And then I've got the audio track that's on the built-in microphones on the camera, and all I use that for is basically to sync audio. So audio is always the thing that I'm 
most worried about. I've had bad audio in the past and I'm just trying to be as conscious about it as possible to try and make sure that the audio sounds okay. That Zoom H4n will actually eat batteries. So I have an AC adapter coming for it. I don't have it here yet. Um, I actually just picked up that Zoom H4n Pro the other day. I picked up on uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday, one of those. Um, so I'm just kind of getting that thing tweaked and into place. But with all of the accessories in that corner, power is a big thing. You know, we've got this soft box, that soft box. They both have their own AC adapter. The camera has its own AC adapter. The Zoom will have its own AC adapter. I've got my Surface Pro here, which I, that's basically, I, I use it in here uh, just to watch Netflix or, you know, do whatever while I'm, uh, while I'm working, it's nice to have. I also have my MacBook charger uh, that I leave plugged in back there and it comes up and goes on the top side of the desk. Uh, and that is in case I'm doing live streams, I like to use the MacBook. It's just easier. I can plug in an external microphone, which I've got a USB Audio-Technica up there. So all of those things run down underneath here. That power strip back there is what basically everything goes into. Now the soft boxes, you, I obviously want to turn off and on and I don't want to always be reaching up for that, uh, for that switch. So, so what I've done is picked up this universal set that allows me to toggle on and off outlets. It was a set of three and it's basically just three of these little boxes. So you plug this in, then you plug whatever item it is into it and then this remote will then control those individually or all of them together. For example, I can take and turn off one of them. You know, you can turn it off or you can turn them all off. And then we're in the dark. So, but one thing is, is that I end up with a lot of remotes in here. So we've got this one for my soft boxes, which is also basically the only light in this room. Then we've got this remote, which is for the RGB on my IKEA shelves. Those are the IKEA LAC shelves, in case you were wondering. Um, so I've got the remote for that. And then I have another remote for the two spotlights that are on the ceiling that point down onto those shelves. It's a lot of remotes. So I do have some Velcro on the back of them. And then they go right here. Stick on the desk. That way, at least I know where they're supposed to be. As long as I put them there, we're okay. That power strip is also a long ways away. So if you ever need anything when you're on the bench, I wanted something closer. So I got a second power strip and that's mounted here. And that power strip has two USB cords. So one, I have an iPhone charger in since I'm on the version of the iPhone without wireless charging still. I also have a micro B USB plugged into there permanently and it just kind of sits around here. So some of my chargers use that, like camera battery chargers for like the GoPro or even my Sony 6400 when it's not using the AC adapter. But then we also have my Dremel plugged in and it hangs off the side. So, so this Dremel I picked up on Black Friday, they had like a 60% off deal. So I picked up a new 4300 series Dremel on their site for like 60 bucks, which was a steal. Now I have a Dremel here and at the shop. Things like that are what make this, you know, continuously be a, uh, an expensive situation. I did get the shelves mounted on the wall behind us here. Uh, and I just, you know, I've got random stuff on there. Not necessarily useful things, but I've got like a ripper hood. This was a blem. Um, and it makes for cool wall art. This is a Ripper grill. This is a Kevin Kirk 3D machined engine. So just kind of fun. This was a Wild Willy driver with a Headhunter Studio head on it uh, that was painted for me by uh, an old RC crawler friend, Norm. My old 4PV, which I don't really use anymore. We've got a Christmas elf, or gnome, sorry. We have a Christmas gnome here since tis the season. Um, a T for my last name my old Canon uh, SL2 camera. And then I've got my old uh, Central Pneumatics Cherry Picker with a 3D, that's a 3D printed engine from Mr. Kama D for the VS410 Pro. Some random paint and a random crystal ball. 
you know, just that shelf, those shelves in general, just kind of things get cycled in and out of them all the time. So uh, as far as the current cars on hand, that's always a, a battle here. The number of vehicles that are in here is always kind of an issue. And I think I actually need to sell some, but also just kind of show you what we've got in here currently. Uh, I've got my Ripper, which is of course never going anywhere. This is the TRX4 budget build, which this is one that I think I will likely sell soon. I've got the VS410 with the TRX4 axles underneath of it. I just did the video of the cage work in the back. This one I'm kind of 50-50 on. I may sell that one here before too long. We've got the Class 1 Forerunner build, which will be for Scale Nationals coming up this year. The Kyosho Ultima, which was fun and I need to drive here before too long. The Drag Bolt, which was really fun and I, I want to keep that. The flip that truck truck, which is obviously planned to be sold. 410 black up there. That's here for a VFD transmission swap video. My 1.9 Wraith, which I want to do a power system swap in it. Right now it's got the axe system and I just do not like the axe system at all. So I need to take that out and then put something good back into it. My VS410 Pro, which is just my, my go-to always car my element enduro of course just a great go-to my capra which still needs some work and i'd still like to do a few things too just to get everything 100 percent right now it's got a prototype offset front pumpkin axle in it so that'll be the new one coming from vp we've got my new associated db10 drag car and then we have the mega mud truck TRX4 sport build. That's another one that needs to just get cleaned up a little bit and sold. So that should open up a little bit of space here. I also have a bunch more cars at the office. I won't have any problem keeping these shelves full. That is, that is not a concern of mine. And then behind me, this is the side that just never is usually to be seen on video. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, it's in the corner. I try to use it the best I can, but since it's not seen, it, it tends to be a bit of a mess. Up top is, is a catch-all of crap right now. <laughs> Parts for the flip that truck, some uh, computer motherboard stuff, uh, microphones. Then here we've just, like I've got, this is my ProTech for, uh, port charger. I've got, you know, RX4 and Mamba X is. Then I've got the Pro, the, uh, Pro Fusion Mayhem build which is sitting up here. Not sure. That one might be another one that gets sold. I'm not sure. And that's the uh, MST JP1 body that's just sitting on it because I'm out of places for bodies. Underneath, we've got uh, the Kyosho Alpine, which is kind of fun and I need to do something with. So after Monthly Mayhem with the uh, burnout cars, Kyosho sent Matt and I some other cars just for, you know, for fun, for, you know, whatever. The the Ultima was one of them, which was super cool. Then they sent me this Alpine and a, another, an Inferno 8 scale RTR. And I have not come up with any sort of plan for content for either of them. You know, they're not my normal type of vehicle, so I, I don't really have a plan. So I need to come up with something. And then I thought it'd be fun to make up some sort of weird just crazy little contest day, make some friends get together. We can hang out, drive some cars. And then in the end, I figured I'd, I'd give, uh, you know, one or both away on the channel, just in some sort of raffle or giveaway type situation. I just need to come up with a good idea of what to do. Then we've got my uh, Arma Infraction, which I bought on a whim and have driven like once. So this is a little bit of my organization, just bins of things you know styrene supplies bearings wiring soldering scale parts then these three are just different links that are you know in these are links that are longer than 120 80 to 120 millimeters and 80 millimeters or less charging stuff which is just like extra pigtail an organized box of organization things <laughs> that's what i mean by organization is like velcro or uh, felt pads wire routing little stick on things you know, velcro straps that type of thing box of dremel accessories uh, shock parts and abrasives so sandpaper then a bunch of arduino parts just uh you know arduino uno and a bunch of accessories and sensors and whatnot 
label maker, have to have a label maker. A ton of Lexan bodies, just random ones. There's a Proline Nova body for the drag car and a bunch of other parts, just random new parts that don't necessarily have a use for yet, but I have. Things like that are what really stack up in here. So I need to find either, I probably need to find a place not within this room where I can start to put things like that in an organized way that I know where they're at. And then I'll be able to use spaces on that shelf for bins of ongoing projects. Like all of the parts that I have for my class one Forerunner build right here are within the box that the Forerunner body came in. So I also have that halo lighting in the background, which I really like the look of. However, I have no solution for how I have it, you know, how I use it. Right now, I literally put that RGB light onto a BS410 box. That's a brand new VS410. I bought it just to hold that light up. That's another one. I need to get an AC adapter for that and I need to figure out a way to be able to mount it and then like bring it out from the wall when it's time to shoot and push it back in when it's not. And it's annoying how it is. And obviously the uh, movie magic of, you know, how fancy my setup is, is, is completely lost when, when you see, <laughs> when you see it. But that's basically this room. I'll also go kind of show you where I do all my editing and kind of run you through my PC build. So this is my desk and edit station. The desk I built, it's an Ikea wood top and it's an Ikea little you know, drawer set. And then I built the leg on the one side with my crown in it. And I just welded that up with my TIG welder and I use the same method I do for building cages. It's silica bronze material. So it's actually, it gives that, that bronze you know, finish. I polished it a little bit and then I hit the whole thing with a clear coat so that it doesn't tarnish over time or at least hopefully not for quite a while. The top is just a solid birch top, pretty inexpensive, looks nice, feels good, doesn't you know give you the cold hands or anything like that. Now my actual desktop setup here, I've got an LG 34 inch panel here. It's an ultra wide. It's actually really nice to edit on. I, I really like this, this monitor. I've got a really basic sound bar underneath there. I almost always use headphones. This is a set of AKG headphones. They're tired and I'm gonna, I need to pick up a new set of headphones, but I need to get those and then a DAC for it. I've got a nice big extended mouse pad, nothing special as far as it goes. Mechanical keyboard. Just one of those nice sounds to annoy anybody else who's in the room. The actual machine itself is an NZXT 500i case. Of course, all kinds of RGB, um, which is on just a random pattern right now. Normally I have it on an actual color scheme, but currently I don't. Um, it is a AMD based build. It's a 2700X CPU, the MSI uh, B470 motherboard set. I have a Samsung 970 Evo Plus uh, M.2 drive in there. We've got G-Skill Trident Z RAM running a total of 64 gig. Thermaltake AIO cooler, which I believe is a 240 millimeter radiator on the front. I've got an RX 580 eight gig video card. I have a one terabyte SSD in here, as well as a four terabyte mechanical drive for archiving. I believe my power supply is a Corsair 850 um, 80 plus bronze certified power supply. So nothing crazy, but pretty decent. Runs this system with plenty of headroom. My mouse is just a Logitech Wireless G6402, basic wireless mouse, uh, programmable. I like the weight, I like the feel overall. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that setup. And my favorite little uh, desk accessory is this out, it's a one hour hourglass. There's something about an hourglass actually showing you how much time you're wasting not getting work done. 
that makes you get work done or makes you hustle just a little bit more when you're editing. This piece here is actually just like a mechanical switcher for my out my audio outputs. I don't like having to do it in the control panel. I like to be able to just push the button here for my output selection, whether it's my sound bar or my headphones. It's a silly little piece, but I, I actually really like that. But that'll probably go away when I pick up the new headphones and a DAC for that. Then we have a very simple uh, USB for SD card reader and all that for, you know, when I'm my cameras and all that. And then this is my little Pelican SD case. I love this thing. I use it all the time. Um, it just holds all of your, you know, SD cards, micro SD cards, you know, micro slots underneath. Especially if I'm out shooting somewhere and I have all my cards and I know which ones are used or not used and which ones have been emptied. Really nice to have. It's like a substantial case to be able to put everything in and know you're not gonna damage it or lose them. The latch is nice, it's waterproof, which I don't have a big concern with that, but just such a nice case for like 20 or 25 bucks. And an Xbox controller for some gaming, of course. And this is one that actually doesn't stay on the desk, it goes with me. This is a, a, a habit tracker or habit journal. Kind of an interesting piece. It's got different sections like daily journal, um, which you know I use it's one line a day type journal, um, regular notepad, notebook stuff for how I track projects, what videos I need to get done, uh, build lists of, as far as parts or things that I need, and then the actual habit tracking part. You know, you can go and it's got a really interesting grid type pattern, kind of helps you. This is a new one I picked up, and it's one of those things that takes like five minutes a day, but it kind of gives you an interesting way to see you know, how daily certain things that you do. But that should give you a really in-depth uh, wrap up of current status of the studio. And hopefully as things progress further and further, we can get even more into how this place has evolved. Again, like I said, there's there's still plenty of things that need to get done that, uh, or, you know, tweaked to run even better, but all a process, but it's a fun one nonetheless. The tech side and all of that, a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have suggestions on the uh, Kyosho, either the Alpine or that Inferno down there as far as some sort of crazy video to make with them and then hopefully give them away on the channel. Drop those in the comments below because I'm drawing a blank. So think of something, let me know. Thanks for watching. As always guys, hope you guys have an awesome week. Hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you